Assalamu alaikum, shalom again. Dakhi so ya gama sedi ibele lona lote. San bonani abu sheni. We have been on a mission to basically commemorate, um, uh, identify, acknowledge women in this month. Uh, we do every day, but you know how there are certain months and times when there's a spotlight. Uh, on on you know certain e certain events or certain parts of who we are as a people nationally and internationally um and our hashtag is empower her and hashtag women's month you are on salam media and your hostess is mamolefe sihume in this segment we're going to welcome uh three phenomenal women who speak the language that I love, I can listen to it every single day, which is fashion. I was telling them now how, you know, based on the jitters that I've had and the rate at which my heart is beating, they have actually given me a wusa, just looking at their pictures and what they're wearing and just, you know, their presence. Um, and our honorable guests are Mebongidromo. Mebongidromo is a legend in the art world. You know, you can I don't think you can actually talk about fashion and separate it from art. You know, art and fashion are like tributaries to something, but they are holistically art. It's an expression, right, as we were saying. And Me, Me Bongidromo uh, studied the fine arts is an expert beyond measure. You'll go, you know, as we said, we give you homework. Go and find out who these legends are, right? And she's been a game changer in the industry of fine arts. And she's got a rich history in terms of the journey of South Africa itself, what it's gone through. You know, we talk about socio-political activism and we think about fashion and the role that it played. That's Me Bongi, that's number one. Welcome Me Bongi Zoromo Mautra. And Thank you so yeah. much. And we're also joined by Taslim, Taslim Bolbulia, uh, who represent, whose baby, who is now probably an adult now, is uh, Bolbulia Threats. That's her, her, her fashion and clothing line. Uh, she's another legend in the fashion industry. You know, when they say you look hijab, look funky. That's my space. That's where I like existing, where you've got uh, modest clothing, but also a bit of, you know, finesse. <laughs> and uh, Taslim owns her, her own clothing line called Bulbulia Threads. And from an age from a very early age she took fashion to new heights and if you can see her you can already see the funk in her so you probably are eager to see what has she already offered to 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 you know the fashion world and finally we also have Keris. Keris, please feel free to correct me i've been practicing how to call it right because i'm very big on names and calling them right um <laughs> And we welcome Keris Vlog Farrow as well, who is the founder, part of the, the uh, founder, co founder of the sustainable fashion show that will be taking place in the Rheinstein Organic Market on the 2nd of September. So, our interest mostly is also the sustainable fashion concept. So, as you can see and hear already, uh, yeah, this is a whole lot of movements in here from sustainable fashion to modesty clothing with funk to the history and the journey of fashion as an expression in the socio political space. Um, I, I think it's only right that we, we start with. Uh, you know, the, the inspiration and the influence of, you know, this month being having a historical, um, what should I say? It's informed by what we've gone through as a people, right, uh, in South Africa. And I think it's only right that we start there to say, you know, when it was unheard of, there was still fashion in the 19, you know, whatever. Every time, every era had its own style. But there was a particular era where I'll take it to, for example, the Black Consciousness era. 
I, I can identify with that because I can almost see those guys with uncombed hair and the beard and the dashikis and, you know, and I think this is where I hope in May Bongi to tell us a bit about, you know, having seen this, how, how did you witness, would you say that there was any influence of activism on the fashion then? Thank you for that uh, question. Absolutely. I think um, fashion is uh, influenced very similar to art. They are all influenced by what is happening around the communities or around the, the spaces where people find themselves. So uh, I, I believe that uh, the 80s, I know they were the roaring 80s, 60s, but they, we, we saw the 80s as another phase of um, uh, may, maybe calling it fashion is, is um, for me, more my, very light. It's better. I mean, for me, it is more the description and the... Um, it's in, in the way that people in what they were wearing, they were expressing their innermost or their, they, what they felt about the period. So um, the Black Consciousness uh, Movement starting uh, in, well, in the late 60s into the 70s became that. Uh, and I I get the feeling, uh, I got the feeling then that um, uh, the dreadlocks and that dashiki, uh, when you think of um, uh, groups like Osibisa, uh, groups like Malombo, and how they influence, while they were doing music, they actually influenced the dress code, they influenced the fashion of the time. So I, I love what you say. We've been, this word has come up quite a lot of times, expression, where it, it, at a time when you were suffocated from saying anything, be it South Africa or anywhere in the world, we saw people expressing themselves and their resistance through fashion, as you say. Thank you. Thank you for that introduction, Mebongi. Um I'll, I'll also now call Taslim. Taslim, there's, you know, there's always been, uh, there's even a word, what Islamophobia and whatnot. And when people talk about fashion, I don't think there was, I think there was a time that you could never talk about, for example, modest clothing or hijab and link it to trends or fashion. How how did you get that to actually be in existence through uh, bulbulia threads? So I can go a little bit further back than that. I also grew up in the 80s. And the 80s was a very expressive period, um, I think, mm. in everything, in music, in film, in media, in everything. Um, and I think for me, fashion or being fashionable is, is not what it is today. I think today people confuse what trends are and what advertising companies feed you versus what mm. people have is uh, their own personal style. Mm. Um, I think um, I've been in fashion for 30 years. I have a commercial brand in YDE as well, which is going probably for 15 years. Um, and I think with Muslim women, or not even Muslim women, just modest dressing people uh, across the board, there's, they've always been fashionable. Um, it's just you know, wearing a headscarf or a hijab um, was actually pretty normal up until maybe 100 years ago. So even in the Western world, even in the 60s and 70s, you'll still see, you know, Grace Jones wearing a turban or stuff like that. So it, it was always there. Um, it's just that because of, I think, 9-11 and all the Islamophobia, that kind of put us all in the spotlight. And I think that's when um, people needed to, uh, what's the word? kind of get more in touch with their own identities and I think the hijab now almost is a sign of resistance um, so when you talk about uh, black consciousness or you know we, we were part of the UDF or things like that I think now what's what it's become is that 
wearing a hijab is really you saying, this is my faith, this is what I believe, mm -hmm. and having people notice that. I think, you know, wearing a, a scarf on your head is fashionable in, in, in any sense, but it's also part of your lifestyle, it's part of who you are, it's a way of expressing yourself. And I think that's what's more important, it's self-expression. Mm. Uh, may I just ask the listeners and viewers to just pay attention to the outfit that uh, Taslim is wearing? <laughs> just saying, I, just, just a start note. <laughs> I, I think also people have a misconception about what modest wear is. And people assume that if you wear a very Saudi looking black abaya, mm. which also only came about in the last maybe 30 or 40 years, they assume that's what Muslim women wear where Islam and Muslims are global we, in every part of the world, um, from every different culture. You'll find Japanese Muslims wearing kimonos, etc. Mm -hmm. So I think we, we must move away from the idea that Muslim women wear black abayas because I think that's what's become the norm. The norm is just that you wear whatever you want to wear that you're comfortable in and that it's not body um, form showing. And that, mm. you know, if you want to, you wear a headscarf. And, you know, it's, it's each for, for each individual person, that is a choice you make between you and your maker. Um, and I think sometimes a lot of things get lost in translation. I appreciate that note. I appreciate that note. Um, Karis, another movement that, uh, that we have seen uh, has been that of sustainability. And in, in almost every aspect, environmental, uh, political, social, you know, this word features a lot, sustainability. I was actually blown away when I, I heard that there's a link between sustainability and fashion. Can you, and you, you are part of this um, upcoming event where that's actually the core of your existence, sustainable fashion. Can you tell us a bit about you and your movement? Yes, well, um, I actually did get into sustainability even before um, being over the market. Um, that's actually how I got into the market was um, I also was researching a lot. Sustainable was a major term um, two years ago around COVID time. And I actually started my own business, um, Sustainable Threads. Um, which is a sustainable active wear made entirely from, re from recycled bottles collected from the ocean. So that is actually how I got into the market, um, how I was accepted into the Bryanston Organic Market because it's sustainable, it's promoting recycled initiatives, um, lowering, carbon emissions, lowering carbon emissions as well. And um, yeah, so I basically started trading at the market as a, a sustainable fashion um, trader, uh, just providing um, clothing to uh, the yoga community as well. Um, and yeah, through that, obviously took over the market and have now really dived into sustainable fashion on a broader spectrum with multiple different female-owned companies, um, most of them at the market, and then a couple of other female-owned companies that are also um, taking part in our sustainable fashion show. Um, it's basically fashion and art exhibition. So we're basically expressing ourselves through fashion and art pieces. So even the models themselves will actually wear clothing and also fashion art. So whether it be um, jewelry, um, like the African beads, um, all that will actually be showcased on the day, on the 2nd of September at the market. Okay. That's quite exciting. Very, very, very exciting initiative. Yeah, very. And, and, and I like that it won't be, it's not just one um, uh, vendor or one clothing line, but you actually invited a couple of people who actually fit that criteria. But you'll tell us more about the event after the ad break. If we can just go to just sip on a bit of water and we'll be back. This is Salam Media. One word that changes the life of a child, orphan. One word to replace smiles with tears, confidence with anxiety, and a future with fear. Help Africa Muslims Agency to give these orphans a new word. 
hope. AMA's Orphan Hope Program provides security for needy children in rural Africa, in Afghanistan, and in the Syrian and Palestinian refugee camps of Lebanon. For 15,000 rand per year, you can change their life, give them hope with African Muslims Agency. Empowering, educating, inspiring. When the perfect blend of stylish decor, exquisite halal cuisine, and warm hospitality come together, it could only mean Albeit Lodge, your true home away from home. Albeit is the ideal heaven for families, business people, and tourists with its four-star family rooms and other luxurious facilities. Conveniently situated close to Port Elizabeth Airport, the beach, and other amenities, your stay will be unforgettable. You will be taking home last memories. Or I can just read it from here. Tranquility that Albeit has to offer. For reservations, call over. Oh, no, it's fine. I'll read it. www.albaitlodge.co.za. Yes, 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 you're right. You're right. Oh, gosh. I have how many more ads now? Across our beautiful land, let us remember those in need. In South Africa, recent weather conditions have left many vulnerable individuals and families struggling to stay warm and nourished. With Ashraful Aid, you can donate a loaf of bread for 10 rand, a blanket for 150 rand, or soup for 100 people for just 230 rand. Donate today at www.ashrafulaid.org. Winter warm, it starts with you. Kids these days are smart, and when you're competing for their attention against their smartphones, you need to make smart choices, like using Sunfoil Triple Refined Pure Sunflower Oil in every meal you make. It's naturally cholesterol-free and approved by the Heart and Stroke Foundation as part of a balanced eating plan. So whether you're cooking, frying, or baking, you get the great tasting results that'll get their attention faster than the latest app. And if that doesn't work, change the Wi-Fi password. Sunfoil, now we're cooking. It's a new beginning. It's a new era. Salam Media, humanitarian journalism. Welcome back. Uh, you are with Salam Media and your hostess is Mamolefe Sihume. 20 fadia masimo hoeta 20 hadipel i did say i'll come back to it um so that's that's my poko or when let's say the bahuruti which i'm part of under the tswanas that's what they would say when they praise themselves so what that means 20 is a monkey they say when the monkeys go into the field i guess to go and look for food or for sustenance or any wellness it's actually the female monkey that leads the troop. And that's part of the praises that are sung when Bahuruzi come through. I'm the twin. And with all these ladies who have joined us, uh, it's actually a reflection of that. People who have taken a lead uh, in terms of what they have. Uh, people who have a passion between fashion and also seeing change. That's what I pick up from all these ladies. And I'm going to just pick up from where we stopped. Keris, can you just um, explain to us, you said you've always been in the sustainable uh, sustainability space. Can you just outline what exactly is sustainable fashion for those who are struggling to grasp the connection between the two? What exactly is sustainable fashion? So sustainable fashion is basically how the fashion is produced in a sustainable way. So um, taking care of our environment, being aware of um, the carbon emissions for producing uh, fashion. So that is really um, recorded. It's kept at a complete minimum. Um, like, for instance, uh, with solar based, so if the warehouse is completely solar, um, there'll be lower, much lower carbon emissions. So um, we need to have all the certification in order to meet that criteria to be a sustainable uh, fashion um, product. So it's OE tech, OE tech certified as well as uh, climate neutral certified. So we would need to meet all that criteria. The way the um, plastic is actually collected, 
uh, how it's um, made non-toxic, if it's like shredded into non-toxic pellets and how it actually gets weaved back into the fabric. Uh, so it's all about the, the actual way the, the clothing is made and at the lowest carbon emissions possible. So this is a, a lot of consciousness. There's a lot of consciousness that I hear in that, in terms of, you know, how it is always said, be conscious of what you eat, be conscious of what you feed your mind. And, you know, it's all about awareness and consciousness. Moving from, I guess, this part of the conversation we're having, it's about awareness for those who may not know, bringing awareness to people that as much as you need to take care of what you're putting into your mind and your being, you also need to be aware that there's a process to get into whatever clothing that you have on you and therefore moving to consciousness of actually be conscious about your fashion, that it doesn't hurt anyone or anything in you actually being clothed upon making it more um, uh, eco-conscious, there would be higher costs towards that. So you're paying for a higher quality garment um, that's meeting that criteria as opposed to opting for something that's cheaper uh, that you can purchase. But obviously there's no um, awareness put into the actual production of the product. Mm. I take that point. That is, I think, the highlight of the sustainable. Now I understand it better. The highlight of what sustainable fashion is. I related to consciousness, right? Uh, Taslim, you spoke about, about modest, that your brand doesn't only talk about hijab and, you know, it's about general modest clothing. For anyone who may have an interest in, what is called modest uh, clothing. In terms of um, collaborations, right, uh, between, uh, generally I'd expect that from the Muslim space, you would be, it's easy to collaborate, but have you ever found that you have to advocate more for you to be able to col collaborate with, um, let's say other people or other organizations beyond the Muslim community? based on that modesty so, theme. Yeah. yeah. Um, the, 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 I just wanted to pick up on the sustainability and awareness thing as well. Um, okay. I think the uh, what I do is something we call slow fashion. So we're not into fast fashion where it's just um, a lot of uh, disposable clothing, which is what a lot of young people, and I'm appealing to the young people out there to steer away from your, your major international retail brands where they may say things like, oh, it's sustainable, it's recycled. You must understand the percentage of what your garments uh, that are recycled is such a tiny, tiny, tiny portion. It's really nothing compared to what they're using elsewhere. Um, and that, you know, buying from places like Sheen and all of these have really just impact, impacted on the South African clothing industry. Um, I've been doing this for many, 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 many years, so I can speak to that. I think sustainable, what we try to do also is we, we buy up a lot of um, so-called dead stock that's maybe been lying in a warehouse since the 80s. So we're not adding to new product being made, but we're using up what is already in the market. Um, I think when it comes to collaborations, collaborations are always important. Um, I see myself more as a clothing designer um, mm. for everybody rather than being um, kind of boxed into only servicing the Muslim community. I would say that um, my clientele will be 50-50. Um, and I think when your product speaks for itself, it's not about, oh, she's, uh, I'm buying a modest wear garment. It's, I'm buying a beautiful garment that happens mm. to um, fit within my modest wear principle. I think for me, um, being from uh, an Islamic background, I think we take into account uh, where things come from, how it's produced, uh, paying people fairly, um, all of that kind of just is there already. It's, it's pretty... Set, I think so for me it's not about bottom line about cheapest price about all of that I think we need to educate the consumer as, as far as it goes with uh, procuring things made in South Africa designed in South Africa manufactured here as opposed to just importing stuff that's very cheap uh, where people are not really considering the impact of the labor force used to produce those garments I think that's very important um, in terms of you know I, I've showcased um, locally and internationally at 
uh, fashion weeks. So I don't think that I have many challenges. I think it, it would be good to try and educate more people, even within the, the, these communities, what modest wear is. Um, mm -hmm. But I think that, you know, people generally uh, gravitate towards one another if you kind of in the same tribe. When I say tribe, I just mean if you have the same kind of um, thinking processes or what is important to you, what your values are, and you kind of draw people in from the same kind of value system. Um, and I think for me, that's very important, especially working with, I work with very diverse people, diverse women from all walks of life, all types of backgrounds. But I think what we have in, in common usually is our value system in that we want to give the best, produce the best, um, we have the, the highest quality um, and have people who have an appreciation of the craft the, 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 the um, craftsmanship behind what you're producing. Um, and I think that's lost on a lot of young people because they have access to too many things. I think mm. Instagram's also really affected us. And I see that in my um, commercial retail brand, uh, people buying stuff on a, a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday to wear out on a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then returning mm. it on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And you see the cycle you put your teacher piece. And it's all about having that picture for that moment and posting mm. it on social media. I think we need to move away from that type of thing. I think being sustainable is extremely important, especially if we're looking at, um, you know, the future of the planet, the future of ourselves, of our children, etc. And I think, you know, this this idea that you need to have something new all the time, you know, as much as it's good for me and good for business, I, I keep saying to my clients, you know, we've already made that before. Let's, let's innovate it, let's change it, let's add to it, um, because mm. you should get a lot of wear out of it clothing. I, I look at my stuff as an investment, so you're investing in yourself in the way you look. Um, but you're investing in good quality fabrics and stuff. And it's something that should last for many, many years, not something that you're going to wear for one event and throw out, which is unfortunately mm. what a lot of people do these days. Mm. Uh, I think the two things that I, I get from that is, you know, this current way of living of instant gratification. You want something now and you get it now. And you after that, which is the second point, waste. Um, uh, you know, after that, there's a lot of, I can imagine how many items of clothing from this kind of living of instant gratification and, you know, reward right now, uh, how many actually garments are sitting in people's uh, wardrobes, uh, which people are not wearing, you know, and that, that in itself is a waste, you know. I think there's a lot of education that needs to go into, again, conscientization, of people, especially the young ones, around this, the topic that we're talking about. Um, Mebongi, can I just uh, add you back in with this? You know, Nina Simone said, an artist's duty, as far as I'm concerned, or she's concerned, is to reflect the times. And I'll leave it there. When uh, you... Yes, during during the, the times, the 80s, the 60s, and before that, you mentioned art. I remember I've heard of black theater, for example. I've heard of, uh, you know, like I say, they have noticed the afros and the beards as an mm -hmm. expression and, you know, the clothing. Currently, um, do you think that uh, the youth is using that or our generation? You know, you've played your role. You continue to play it. But do you think that our generation is actually doing exactly that, you know, using the art to uh, reflect the times? And in which way? Uh, I've been uh, recently uh, encouraged. Okay, it looks like we may be having a technical problem with Mebongi. I'm looking forward to that response, actually. Um, maybe we can just give her, or give her system a chance to just recuperate and just go for an ad and then prepare for, an, for a response because I'm looking forward to this one. Uh, as we go for a break, we'll be back with you. Or watch live facebook.com forward slash Salaam Media. For a long time, we've lived in a centralized world where institutions held the all-important data and confirmed all transactions. Those times are over. Welcome to Libertas Group, a blockchain developing company boasting an ecosystem that continually redefines the way we do business. 
our blockchain is decentralized, making it immune to hacking or alteration, putting the power back in your hands with no middleman so you can focus on the growth of your business. Libertas, the simplest investment choice you'll make. Education, health, dignity, empowerment. These wishes all begin with water. Africa Muslims Agency is committed to providing clean water to the thousands who still live without this basic human right. Support us in giving the best of charities. Provide a water well for 14,800 rand or a borehole for 49,500 rand in Afghanistan or 55,000 rand in Africa. Gain Thawabi Jaria and help communities to reach their full potential. Africa Muslims Agency. Empowering. Educating. Inspiring. Conveniently located along the banks of the Crocodile River bordering the Kruger National Park, as a guest at Buckler's Africa Lodge, one can enjoy an amazing sunrise or sunset on our spacious deck area while you catch a glimpse of some wildlife sightings along the Crocodile River. The sounds of the African savanna will greet you whilst you enjoy your morning coffee. Buckler's Africa Lodge by Tingana Collection. Buckler's Africa Lodge is ideally situated only six kilometers from the Crocodile Bridge Gate in the Kruger National Park. Catering for all travelers with variety, we have four types of the finest rooms, superior rooms, deluxe rooms, deluxe suites, and two-bedroomed family units. Each room is equipped with the finest amenities to make your stay unforgettable. Guests can choose between the self-catering option or book their accommodation with breakfast and dinner included. Buckler's Africa Lodge is your ideal location for the ultimate Kruger getaway experience. We specialize in exhilarating and educational game drives in Kruger tailor-made to suit your family. Inquire about our various accommodation offerings and other activities. Visit www.tingana.co.za for more information. Buckler's Africa Lodge by Tingana Collection. Experience the pulse of Africa with us. Rejuvenating media day by day. This is Salam Media. Welcome back. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, your hostess, Mamule Fesuhume, on Salam Media. Hashtag Empower Her and Hashtag Women's Month. Uh, Mebongi, do we have you back? Oh man, I was looking forward to that response. Um, I can just throw it to any of you, ladies. Keris, uh, Taslim, do you feel that as Nina Simone says, have we used uh, the platform? Listen to me saying we. <laughs> okay, I'll acknowledge. I'll, I'll take that. I'm an artist. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. But have the artists that now, the, the artists that we see now in whatever spaces that they exist, have they showed and reflected the times that we had as we have seen historically? Uh, any of you ladies can take that. Any, mini, mini more. Um, I think... Uh... You know, being in a, in a in creative space, um, everybody has their own way of expressing themselves or expressing the moment. Um, I think I'm a little bit old to speak to that. Um, I do <laughs> feel that a lot of the work that was done by our four runners, or, or that's what I'll call them, um, mm -hmm. I do sometimes feel like it's been wasted on this generation. I know I'm being harsh. Um, but I, I, I feel like there are not enough people stepping up and doing what they should be doing. I think there's a lot of talk, but I, I've yet to see the youngsters uh, step up and, and kind of um, boldly go uh, where no one's been before. I think that a lot of people nowadays uh, get caught in being um, accepted by everybody else, and so they're a bit afraid. I mm. feel like in the 80s, in the 70s, in the 60s, people were bold. They, they did what they felt was necessary. Um, yeah. But I, I'm sure there are many of them out there who are doing and we're just not aware of it. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't mean to be critical, I, but I do feel like the youth really need to, to step up and do a bit more. And I'm just talking just from a, a very uh, social media type of, uh, yeah. you know, uh, what was the word to use? I don't feel, I feel like um, if you look at what's happening on social media, there's just too much um, plasticity, if that's a word. <laughs> but I think people we have get become you. We so, get you. <laughs> yeah, the, people have become so superficial. And I think that's so sad. I think that everybody has so much to offer. And I think like everybody's uh, individual voices get drowned out by the masses. 
Um, mm. And I think maybe it's harder for them to speak up because there's just so many things going against them. I do think that, and I, I'm appealing to people who are in their twenties, right? I mean, I'm hitting 50 now. So I, that's why I'm saying I feel like I'm a little bit older um, and I come from a different generation. But I do think that there are so many more opportunities, uh, so many uh, access to, to market is so much easier, access to doing things is so much easier. And I'm sure that they will step up eventually. Uh, and maybe we just here to say, you know what, uh, guys, take a look at yourselves and do something. Mm-hmm. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Uh, Mebongi, um, would you yep. want to step back into that uh, question before you went off? Yes, yes, please. Um, I was just saying, I think I would agree uh, that uh, it's the times that uh, are facing us that are making it um, so difficult to sustain what we were doing in, in the past. But then, uh, like everything else, I think we have to adapt and get um, ways and means to make what we are doing uh, to to be relevant to the young people now, but going forward. Because it, I always, when I speak to my kids and I say, we used to, and they say, yes, you used to, but <laughs> what do we do now moving forward? And mm-hmm. you can't um, be... We, we can't be saying we, we I used to walk to school now you you are not um, you you have to be dropped at school because times have changed and mm. social media and the new uh, new media that uh, our children are are using to, for communicating uh, is it's not a problem it's actually quite a, a, a jump. A, a solution, but we, I think it's up to us, the older uh, generation, to ground what we know into today so that uh, young people, uh, I was saying when I, before I was, uh, I, I got off, I was saying that uh, I'm getting very, very encouraged to see young people uh, going to see what used to be through museums and art galleries uh, because all that fits into what we are discussing uh, at and uh, uh, at and fashion uh, because it's everything is fashionable you make art uh, that reflects your immediate environment and your immediate circumstances all because you are a reflector what uh, uh, Nina Simone was saying is true that we have to reflect uh, to society what we observe and are able as um, as artists, musicians, theatre uh, people, fashion, what it is that has got to be communicated to the public. Mm. I think what would be interesting, uh, talking about museums, it would be so interesting to actually have a museum that reflects fashion of the time, to sort of link history and the fashion of the time until where we are, and it continues into the future. I think that in itself is a gap. Um, hopefully somebody's listening, or even the panel <laughs> right here, just, just saying. <laughs> no, but um, it's true. It's yeah. true. I, I know that in the U.S. they have uh, and what they call the Women's Museum, and within it they are not just the visual arts, but they mm. are um, fashions of the different periods that they show in the museum. And I, I think we, with I, I thought at some point when Museum Africa in, in Joburg was working, we were hoping that that was going to be reflected, but unfortunately, uh, it went uh, the other way. It, it does historical um, uh, uh, renditions of things that we know about, but it doesn't keep up with the times. It doesn't keep up with what is happening now. But you're right, we, we should be thinking about that because when you think about what was happening in Soweto with the uh, student uprisings, we don't have, except for the photographs, we have mm. nothing else that shows expression 
of parents, of mothers who lost their children, of kids that uh, lost their... Fr- we don't have that as a, a reflecting point. We only have photographs of... Okay, I think we got the, the gist of it uh, until we get Mebongi back. Uh, Keris, I'm thinking of, of what, you, what you are standing for, which is what we spoke about, sustainable fashion and consciousness and all that. Would you say that um, there's a younger, should I say following, for, for lack of a better word, a younger following that sort of understands this and wants to actually you know, get deeper into it and just ensure the continuity of this um, such that it's spread around. I don't know how far do we know or how much do we know of sustainable fashion. But uh, as as Daslim says, her, her, her fear is that we might be driven a lot by, you know, the social media type of living. And that's our learning. And I don't think things like sustainable fashion are said enough there. Um, but do you think we have potential and prospects of the younger ones? I would definitely feel we do have potential, um, especially now that, I mean, I've reached more towards the younger community, um, just based off um, being next to the Michael Mount Wardorf School, the Bryanston Market is situated in the same vicinity. Um, That market itself the um, the feed that the traffic that actually goes through that market is very much conscious thinkers. Um, so I say I would say it depends on the the area, but obviously by our area being next to the school, the school is geared towards independent, creative thinkers, um, and we see them actually come through. So we create programs where we allow. Um, the school kids to come through to the market and actually express themselves, um, be it sustainable, artistic, uh, creative. And we've seen a lot of the students come through and actually want to start businesses in fashion. We had one child um, who came out of school and actually started creating art on on sketches, on on little, um, your white little sneakers, um, just as a starting point. So I do feel that there is there is definitely um, a way forward for kids to be become more aware. It depends, obviously, on the schools and the parents. Um, Michael Mount Water School is very much geared towards sustainable, natural, and you know, organic. So, um, with that, you know, it is about the parents and what the parents want their children to be um, a- allowed to be a- see the world. Um, with Michael Mount, it's it's more about um, teaching them about being independent, thinking for themselves. So we try and keep the the social media, the TV to a minimum. So the school actually ensures that that they are still thinking creatively with their own brains. Um, so I feel like there is definitely change. There's, there's still young uh, students out there willing to make a change in the fashion industry in multiple different industries and all across the world yeah. thank you for that i think there's there's a lot of hope i think most of most of us they we have a whole lot in us we just need tapping into or a platform to actually bring that out and i think it's also a challenge to all of us for those who have been they say it's the duty of those who have been conscientized to conscientize mm-hmm. others so perhaps there's also a gap there you are talking about the world of school and you know in its relation then to other schools perhaps in the townships or anywhere else where there isn't that type of consciousness maybe to see how can we bridge that gap in terms of conscientizing it's just homework i'm just saying it putting it out there <laughs> and i appreciate your ladies uh the light that you have shared with us and you know just also proper understanding also of how much of a tool fashion can be has been and can be you know and i i hope that maybe through the social media handles if you've got or if people want to get in touch with you um if you can provide that so that let's say somebody's listening who's actually interested in fashion then we'll have at least one 
of a different thinker and hopefully that can just spiral into something else. Can we start with you, Taslim? We can't hear you, Taslim. I think you've muted yourself. Yes, I did. Sorry. <laughs> um, my Instagram is bulbuliathreads underscore official. Um, since me, uh, my other and <laughs> social media account has been hacked, so this is a new one. Um, okay. I also have a retail br uh, brand in YDE stores called Soul Child. Okay. So if someone wants to talk to you about maybe they have an interest in communicating with you, can they just get in touch with you through that Instagram page? Yes, yes. yes. Um, they, you, they can just message me. I do respond to direct messages. The last part is actually what I wanted to hear, that you do respond. I know people no, I run do. away I... from DMs. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I do. I do. And if okay. there are any young um, fashion design students or whatever want to get in touch with me, they're more than welcome. And do you have space to mentor? Um, we do. We always have space to mentor. I think it's okay, important. Cool. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Sorry for putting okay. you under pressure. And Karis, uh, can you just shed some light before we close the show? Uh, we end the show. Um, can you tell us about the event on the 2nd of September, just quick, and also contact numbers? Okay, so the 2nd of September is our Sustainable Fashion and Art Exhibition. Um, it will be from 11 o'clock to 3 o'clock in the afternoon, with all the markets on display, as well as a few extra women-owned businesses. That will be War SA, Shakira, and Nona Plastic who will also be showcasing their clothing. And then um, we also have a special guest speaker on the day. Um, she will be our main act as well. It's Narato Malaki. Um, and she is a Miss World South Africa semi-finalist contestant. So she will be there uh, speaking about uh, doing a talk on strong women and empowerment. The fashion show is going to be from an age group from five all the way up to 60. And so we're going to have quite a nice array of men and women, children, and a nice talk on empowerment and strong women. And how can they get in touch with me if they want to find out about the event? So uh, you can you can call us on 011-706-3671, or you can also follow our Instagram on Bryanston Market. Um, we are located on 14. Coast Road in Bryanston. Open every Thursday and Saturday, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Thank you very Thank you. much. Time. I appreciate it. All the best with that. Mel, Mel uh, Bongi, we're going to just close this conversation uh, with you. If you can, I know people who've, you know, people who've been active since before we were even <laughs> born are always ready to help and to guide. And I have a feeling you still have some programs that you run where you're willing to take the young with you and educate. How can we get in touch with you? Um, unfortunately, I don't Insta, I don't Facebook. I, I do have a contact uh, on 079-772. 7189. It's both for um, a mobile and WhatsApp. One and that's day for. When, yes, so I, I say one day when I grow up and go Instagram <laughs> and Facebook. <laughs> we'll join you when we also grow up. But that's for the <laughs> fine arts and fashion, right? Okay. Um, we, it was. It was good while it lasted, but I think we've gotten what we needed to just march forward. And I appreciate your your presence and what you have shared with us and the knowledge that you've shared with us. And that's for our guest. And yeah, march on. I also hope that you, you know, there's a link somewhere that each of you can find in each other and some collaboration somewhere. For instance, the... Um, sustainable fashion show maybe does Liam would find the time to go there whichever way that is possible but i hope that collaborations and partnerships are born from this as well thank you kindly for your time we really appreciate it peace assalamu alaikum and that folks was survivor salam media <laughs>
I'm kidding. <laughs> Thank you very much for tuning in and we'll talk again and connect again on Thursday. Same time, same place, uh, different topic on Thursday from 11 to 1. Assalamu alaikum. May peace be with you all. Bula.